Hello and welcome to the Warp Show. I'm Frank Duran. I'm Deshaun Vasquez. And today, two artists reach into the pile of media that is film, uh, comics, comics uh, games, TV shows, anything that moves, yeah. Anything that could fit on that warp shelf back there. That and shelf behind and too. See what's, yeah, and see what's worth taking with you. And uh, today we're talking about something that's, I, I, I spoilers, it's worth taking home with you people. Uh, we're talking about Guillermo del Toro's uh, Pinocchio today. The, the mm-hmm. Netflix released uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, uh, Pinocchio adaption. Now, I, I think a lot of people may have missed this in the rush of Glass Onion coming out at pretty, you know, around the same, at the end of the year there. There was a lot of uh, Netflix movies dropping at the end of the year there, and I think some movies got left in the dust. And that, this shouldn't And the have. gap between it and Disney's live-action remake of their version of Pinocchio wasn't that big? Yeah. So I think some people were kind of looking down at this being like, oh, another Pinocchio. Um, guys, I'm telling you, Right here, right now, this movie is spectacular. Uh, if you're a stop motion fan, this is the longest, like on record, produced uh, a, a animated stop motion movie, and I think it's worth it. I think it absolutely is. Uh, it, it's long for a reason, and it looks fantastic the entire time. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, th- this should not be something you miss out on. This is something that a lot of people may just be like, oh, well, it might win best uh, animated picture. Uh, in my mind, if it doesn't win best animated picture, I'm slapping bitches. We're slapping bitches all over this place. We're, <laughs> I'm just I, I'm just getting up and slapping everybody. <laughs> I'm not going to get angry about it because I know the Academy doesn't actually care about animated films. <laughs> yeah, right. Every year they make that. We even have an later. animated like a best animated film category is because Beauty and the Beast got nominated for best picture. And then they were like, absolutely not. Never again. <laughs> and that's my thing. I think that this would be in the best picture nomination if they weren't being like, oh, animation's not an art form. Fuck off. It's for kids. And you're like, uh, mm-hmm. ha, 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 stop. <laughs> uh, this isn't, it is beautiful. This is, this movie is beautiful. And it, because um, of its imperfections and how much love is put into it. Um, I will say this is a great two punch here, this movie, because you'll watch the movie and then you'll get out of the movie and you'll automatically see that there's a documentary about how they made the movie. Um, if you're anything like me, you absolutely click that thing um, mm-hmm. and are treated to amazing time lapses of how they are made this, how they made this movie. And uh, it is a, a, a beautiful thing to watch, a, 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 an almost mind blowing thing to watch. I think I sent you a time lapse before you had even seen the movie. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and I was, uh, I was, I was trying like, to nudge you, just like hurry up, watch hurry up, the damn hurry movie. up. And, and I want to make this clear off the bat. You know, like this is not a corpse's bride. This is not Nightmare Before Christmas. This is. Um, uh, this is more in the vein of a Kubo and the two strings where it's like pushing what stop animation can do at the same time as delivering a thrilling movie, you know, like mm-hmm. an absolutely like a uh, 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 epic uh, of a movie. Um, I think that this the, uh, the Pinocchio kind of surprised me because I was kind of like. Going in being like, I, I mean, I love Del Toro. He can do no wrong. So I was just going in being like, I'm going to I'm gonna like this, I'm sure. Um, and I, I was liking it at first. Uh, but then uh, it, it, it comes to a certain point and I fell in love. You know, like where I was like, oh, this is different. I was like, I was like, and I, we could talk spoilers later. But like, I, it, it's one of those movies where you're like, oh, Pinocchio. And then at a certain point, you're like. That's that's not Pinocchio. Um, I, I don't think I've seen this one before, and <laughs> and uh, that's when I fell in love. Is when they well, kind the, when he kind of like shows his cards, and I was yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> like that's a pretty good segue because I did uh, write in my notes here of like our experiences with other interpretations of Pinocchio. 
because yeah. it's it's one of those things where like I never read the actual book as a kid, but there are so many really? different iterations of Pinocchio out there that always take like their own liberties in some mm-hmm. way or another. That it was just one of those things where like I mean I've sort of gotten it piecemeal. <laughs> Yeah, I think everyone's gotten the kind of true story of Pinocchio at some point in some way because people are adapting Pinocchio or with this movie, even Frankenstein, you know, like it, it's like a little bit and it's like, uh, uh, but like it. It's cool because, yeah, Pinocchio, I read it. I've read the book before. I, of course, was a big fan of the uh, Disney movie, but it yeah, kind of the Disney movie um you know it like anything disney takes like the all the teeth out of everything and you're kind of like oh 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 pinocchio is a much darker story than uh than than disney lets on <laughs> even though it yeah. di- i will say disney's pinocchio is has some frightening imagery like the the boys turning yeah, into donkeys the, stays the, fan- with the whole you. fantasy island thing yeah, Fantasy Island stays the fuck with you, and I think that's the point, and I think that Guillermo del Toro is able to substitute a Fantasy Island in here that is incredible. Um, mm-hmm. But, guys, we're not even 10 minutes in. I won't talk spoilers yet, but we'll get we'll we'll get there. Um, it, mostly, I would say that the way to sum this up is it's Pinocchio in fascist 1930s, 1940s Italy. You yeah, know, Mussolini's like it, Italy. Mussolini's Italy, um, which is, I, I think, a really cool take on it because a lot of it takes place in the 1800s usually. Um, that's the yeah. usual Pinocchio setting. But also that's kind of a stamp when it comes to Del Toro's work. Like he loves setting stories mm-hmm. in or around or reeling from wartime as a backdrop or some sort of like framework or foundation. Because if you look <laughs> at like his filmography – like, The Devil's Backbone takes place in the final year of the Spanish Civil War. Mm-hmm. Pan's Labyrinth is, like, during the Francoist dictatorship. So, like, they're still reeling from the Spanish Civil War. <laughs> Shape of Water is at the height of the Cold War. Yeah, like, that's true. His version of Nightmare Alley uh, starts with the Great Depression and then builds up to World War II. Yeah, and I, and I feel like he, you know, a lot of the times is dealing with the themes of war um and, you know especially with like pan's labyrinth and stuff like that but like this is fe- this feels very head-on about you know like his thoughts on war you know like mm-hmm. very much much so and i i kind of dig that i will say that right off the bat i think that deserves being said early this is a weird conundrum of a movie because is it your standard family film no no uh i, I would say sometimes it's strikingly violent and and dark and uh but it's a musical and it made me giggle at ewan mcgregor like more often than i thought i would and you know like and it really is kind of this like heartwarming like family film it like about family and like father and son relationships and like what it means to like have a family and like uh i uh, I, I, it's one of those things where you're like, so does that make it a family film? And you're like, I did see it a guy hit been, a rock and it depends a, on the and family. Die. It would have <laughs> been for my family. In fact, when I watched this the first time, I had watched it with my mom. She fucking bawled her eyes out by the end. Yep. And the first thing she said was like, I have, I want to show this to your mm-hmm. nephews. I want to show this to my grandchildren. Yeah. Just like, yeah, it's it's sort of like. A kids movie we would have gotten that was rated PG before the invention of the PG thirteen rating when they, when they actually had some fucking. <laughs> I I think so too. This is like it. It's got some moments. It's got some like sort of feel where it's like, uh, it's like um, oh my god, it's like La- Labyrinth or uh, Black Cauldron, where it's just like mm-hmm. obviously too scary, and you're kind of like. Who the fuck thought this was okay? And it's Jim Hansen in the corner going, <laughs> and you're just like, and damn you, Jim me, Hansen. As a kid being like me, I like scary. It's true. That's the thing is kids like scary, you know? So it's like, it's kind of one of those things that even though this is kind of more notched up than your average family film, I think that this is still, uh, I, I, it matters about the family, of course. I think there's some there families t- that watch this and be traumatized, and others that will think that this is fantastic. Yeah, tough enough, anyway. Yeah, exactly. There was a there was a great 
a comment on one of the trailers for this movie on Facebook, I think it was. Of course. And there was some mom that was obviously a little traumatized by it commenting. <laughs> and she went, I it's just like, this movie's so dark. I can't really show this to my children. It's it's too much about death. And what I loved is that the first reply <laughs> wasn't the usual, just like, ah, shut up, Karen, get out of here. <laughs> but instead was someone just going, on the contrary, it's very much about life. Yes. And I was yeah, like, true. this guy gets it. This guy gets it's true. It's true. Um and, and it, it yeah, it's very much about life and death. And even though it may have darker themes, it's kind of like it, what you're not gonna show like Nightmare Before Christmas, you know, like sort of thing where you're kind of like a little bit darker. Like what what? You're not gonna like come on. Come on. Come on, get over I mean, it. <laughs> sell other movies after Nightmare Before Christmas. You have like Coraline and Wendell and Wild. Like, and there are kids who love that spooky shit. Yeah, exactly. And, and it like can like mean a lot to kids who do like spooky shit. And I th feel like this might be one of those things for a future generation. Hopefully, yeah. But, and we tend to forget that like f old fairy tales are of really dark morality tales. Yes, exactly. I kind of knew, like, I knew it wasn't uh, a kid's story right from the get-go, but I, I knew it re it wasn't exactly your, your like, standard story, like, kid storytelling when he set his feet on fire and, like, brought his feet out of the fire, and it was kind of this, like, weird, horrifying moment of him losing his feet, and you're kind of like... Uh oh! <laughs> I was like, Even the way I was like, introduced to Pinocchio, and he like he's rattling, and he looks like a creature yeah. out of a horror film because he can't move right yet. I know, right? You're just like, holy shit! <laughs> I do like that Guillermo del Toro is able to like combine a bunch of his styles here too. You know, like he's able to like it, it, able to bring his horror at the same time as mm -hmm. as, as his like historical fiction and like at the same time as all the, all these other things i it's really cool that like even though it's like his movie he didn't direct it and it's like kind of cool that they were able to bring his vision to life here you know like and make it he did direct uh, it he did direct it because there's another yeah. guy that's listed as director there is a there is a co-director yeah that's what i assumed is that like cuz because obviously he, it, it's like he, he's doing all the shots, but like he couldn't mm -hmm. do it himself, you know, sort of thing. Where I think like, it's like the co sense. co director to someone who has actually more technical knowledge as to how stop motion yeah. works. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense to me. You're like, you're like, you can't have a guy who, you know, you can't as much as Guillermo has. I mean, Del Toro has worked in animation. It's like you know, it's stop motion is something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it absolutely is. Which uh, I appreciate because I love stop motion as a storytelling medium and like the subgenre, well, not even subgenre, sub medium of animation. And I feel like it's just kind of a specialty thing now. Yeah. So occasionally you you get it. Like you have <laughs> studios like Leica trying to keep it alive with their stuff. And then, you know, if you're lucky, maybe Wes Anderson will direct a stop motion movie. He's done too. Right. I, I, I think it's the, the time and the patience to stop motion. That's yeah. incredible to me. It's like animation alone takes a lot of patience, but like to it's really about breathing life into like inanimate objects and making mm -hmm. them move and come to life. And that is true art to me is that like they are able to take something that's dead. Like nothing, it can't move, you know. Like, it, like, like this story's about, which is why I think that Pinocchio is such an apt story to tell with stop motion. Is that like it's literally about breathing life into a wooden puppet, and that's exactly what stop motion does: is exactly. breathe life into all these puppets. And I, I think that that's what's, uh, that's what's so beautiful about it. Um, he gives. Yeah. It, 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 that's pretty much the quote he says in there. Oh, no, his quote is imperfection lets you know how hard it is to work. So we let them like show his imperfections is what he says in like the documentary. He's just, he really wants it to be like real life. So it's like they, you can see it in the animation. They're everything's not perfect. It's like, you know, they'll go to grab something and they'll be, they'll have like a second thought and they'll choose something else or, mm -hmm. uh, or they won't like sit right. You know, something that, uh, uh, del toro says that you wish for when you're recording live action and here you kind of have to like make it happen you know like yeah. and i think that's that's what makes this a step 
above is that I feel like, you know, there's a lot of great stop motion movies, but there's, there's so much realness going on here, you know, Mm -hmm. in the way that that everyone moves. Uh, It's kind of incredible. Like there's a lot of life breathed into this. And I think it's what makes it stand above and makes it so spectacular. Yeah. And just on an aesthetical standpoint, I also appreciate little touches like mm. Pinocchio is one of the more just like straight up is made out of wood interpretations for yeah. it as opposed to trying to make them more lifelike. And I appreciate that. And it I, definitely I ties into something they do with the whole like real boy conundrum later. Yeah. And it also um, it, it ties into a couple things, because first off, there's this kind of uh, theme of Italian pine, which anybody who actually works with wood knows that pine is the softest fucking wood. That's the point is that is that they, they even say like strong Italian pine. And you're just like, you're like, that's what? Ho- hold on. <laughs> you're just like, wait, pine is soft as hell. And and like and that's the point is that Pinocchio's like uh, keeps being thought of as this strong invincible thing but he's really this like soft breakable wood you know like and really like uh, easy to actually break and and you know like i mean it also and, ties to the fact that it's like the fascist voiced by Ron right? Perlman who says this oh my god right you're just it's so strong so perfect. seemingly strong on the outside ultimately very fragile and, and then it's like and it's so and it's like and it also ties into the imagery of the pine cone of like they're looking the, the uh carlo and uh, geppetto are looking for like the perfect pine cone to like make things out of and like and, and it's something that like pinocchio can't find the you know the perfect pine cone even though he's made out of pine and, you know like it's it's like it's like it's that interesting imagery of like fo- of of the pine cone uh representing a sun you know like that of of this like you're looking for this perfect seedling this perfect sun but in reality most pine cones are you know bashed about in some way you know like yeah and i thought that was interesting there is sort of a disconnect there or not a misconception i would say that even i learned say in middle school during art classes that like nature even as perfect as it looks has little imperfections that makes things unique yeah i mean uh, you look at you look at a rose or any sort of like flower, not all the petals are symmetrical. If you actually look at it. Exactly. If you add, it's like one of those things that uh, in wilderness survival and boy scouts, they teach you to, to uh, set things up at right angles when you're like building structures and everything. So people will notice because right angles just don't fucking happen in nature, you know, like serious, just perfect right angles do not appear in in real life it's just us making that happen so like if you Mm -hmm. want to get spotted you make a right angle and that's the truth of it is that in nature there's no right angles there's no perfect yeah there's also like that there's also uh something similar in uh steve jobs where they mention and he's talking about his uh the next computer and how the measurements are actually slightly off because people can't really perceive a perfect cube so you need to (laughs) cheat it to make it look perfect yeah right you're like oh shit i thought that was funny but you're just like of course of course and then people give him shit for it and he's just like i i i don't know what to tell you like um but uh i think that the uh sorry what the fuck we were talking about pine cones we got so fucking lost in the pine cones. strong italian pine uh, ultimately <laughs> fragile ultimately fragile um i i do want to say that the yeah, I really love the 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 figure of Pinocchio. I think mm-hmm. you're right that he's like really cool that he's all wood. What's cool is they sh- talk in the documentary that he's the first 3D printed puppet for film. Literally, wow. they 3D printed every bit of him, and you can see by his face that uh, it, unlike the other um, the other puppets that are on screen, which actually have robotic, like they actually move up and down. You can move the faces. Like you can, you can like push down the eyebrows and move the cheeks and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Pinocchio literally has like a chopped out mouth. Like every time there's like an ax hitting it, like sort of is how his mouth kind of moves and how he talks. And so they literally, so they, they, they did replacement, which is where they just literally replace his face every time he talks or expresses mm-hmm. some other way, but they wanted to avoid that with almost every other puppet, which is uh, 
you know, it's a lot of stop motion you see is is replaced where they're replacing the face constantly to make different expressions. And I feel like this robotic way makes so much sense so they could just go in and be like, good. And plus, it's part of the design. It makes sense that it's part of the design. So you don't question it. Right. Exactly. Uh, I, it's like they're so stylized that it works so well, like the like Geppetto having such a giant beard. It's like he can uh, it's like it helps with expression, but it's like it's not it, it's the the beard itself, uh, you know, covers a lot, you know, like yeah. it, it's it, it's cool. Have, it's like Volpe's like, exaggerated features with a long nose and like the big yeah. hair. <laughs> which it, it was uh, by the way we should talk about the cast i feel like the cast is absolutely spectacular here this is quite the like stacked cast yeah i didn't really i've like followed this movie for a while because del toro stop motion yeah. pinocchio fine Got i'm you. down whenever it comes out i'm there i didn't really go into like looking up who was actually going to be in it so it was fun watching it <laughs> and recognizing all the voices i knew ron perlman was going to be in there somewhere so yeah, as right. soon as like, so as soon as I heard him like there's his boy, <laughs> there he goes. Uh, but uh David Bradley right off the bat as Geppetto, I was just like, oh shit, sweet. <laughs> yeah, you're like, hey, um, it's uh what's his name in Harry Potter? Uh what he's I'm, Filch I'm, in Harry Filch, Potter, he's Walter it. Frey in Game of Thrones, yep. he's William Hartnell in Adventure in Space and Time, and then actually got to Always. play the first doctor in Doctor Who proper later. Nice. <laughs> He and then you and McGregor as Cricket, uh, uh, Sebastian uh, J. Cricket. Uh, you got uh, Burn Gorman as as a priest in there, which is uh, awesome. Um, uh, John Tutorio as uh, uh, Daughtry, uh, Finn Wolfhard as Candlewick, which I was like, I was like, oh shit, <laughs> I was like, does that mean that Finn, Finn Wolfhard could play a little kid for the rest of his goddamn life? Is that what they're like, kind of? implying here because he's so much older than candlewick here and he's still pulling it off and you're kind of like also with right, an accent he's set. right you're like okay he did it <laughs> like he really did it um i absolutely love kate blanchett as uh spazzarella is that how you say it spazzarella uh, Spazitora, the monkey i thought yeah. that was great because it's one of those which things is like that... the stand in for the cat which is really cool <clears throat> It's great, and it's one of the and it's um, uh, it's such a great thing because uh, Del Toro was working with uh, Kate Blanchett on on something previous, and she Nightmare was like, Alley, I, Nightmare Alley, and she yeah, was she like, was I want to be Alley, so. in Pinocchio, and he was like, I only have the monkey left, and she was like, I I will be in your movie, I don't care what it is, and she, and then it's kind of like he expanded that role a little bit, and I think that that role is hilarious that she like voices all those three little puppets that spin around her him and like and it's actually like an a worth a full like worthwhile role and i was like geez if, okay <laughs> if they caught her probably before they were so like deep into production on pinocchio it probably would have been appropriate to have her play either deaf or the wood sprite yeah because they're both voiced by tilda swinton so it would have been cool <laughs> if like one was voiced by tilda swinton and one was voiced by kate blanchett but i'm sure yeah. it's just like nope that work's already done contracts and all i can't do that <laughs> um i love that the black rabbits are tim blake nelson um which i uh which we're talking about the cast uh the moment that made me realize that this was a different fucking pinocchio was the minute that pinocchio died uh mm -hmm. in the first time i was like oh okay when he died the first time i was like what and then there he's like with the black rabbits and i was like and there's all this like mexican imagery and i was like this mm -hmm. is i was like okay like i was like i was like del toro's like, <laughs> like every yeah he's like here we go and i'm just like okay that's that's when i it's like i did like the movie before that but i felt like it was kind of drag like it was sort of dragging its feet a little bit and then the ice I realized why it was like throwing the lid off of like of Pinocchio can't fucking yeah, die. Yeah, it eases and you in like, with familiarity. Oh. Just like Geppetto builds his own son. Essentially, we go through like, oh, don't lie, your nose will grow. We yep. gotta send you to school. It's all stuff that you've seen before. Yep, it's like literally almost beat for beat at points that it's be like a shame Disney. if we ran this kid over with a truck. <laughs> yeah, and see I was that like, coming. Oh, <laughs> when that happened, I was like. They really just hit Pinocchio with a fucking truck. I guess, like, <laughs> holy shit. Like, 
<laughs> it's like, what the fuck is that? Uh, I thought Christoph Waltz was fantastic as Count Flop. Uh, I thought Volpe. he was Volpe. I thought he was fantastic. And, and it's super funny to have SpongeBob, Tom Kenny as as Mussolini. You're like, oh, OK. <laughs> like, yeah, he's also he's also the like Captain Ahab ass fisherman. That's like, don't go yes. into the sea. You don't. I could tell it was him immediately because, of course, it's are you ready, kids? Like, and I was yeah. like, I would know that voice <laughs> anywhere, you know, like that's. I, I immediately was like, that's Tom Kenny. I was like, okay. I was like, SpongeBob's here. Um, I, re- I, I think a really fantastic cast that is a- a- able to shine even in an animated movie. And I think that that's what's so great uh, about the I also the love cast the here. subversion of like uh, Ewan McGregor playing Sebastian. That is just like, yeah. yes, we all know Ewan McGregor can <laughs> sing. We're going to keep him from singing almost the entire time as a running gag. I did, dude, when it happened the second time, I was like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I literally was like, I was like, what the fuck? Let you and McGregor sing. I was like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> like, I was like, first time's funny. Second time, what the fuck is happening here? Like, <laughs> but uh, I mean, that brings a good point. Let's talk about the music. I I thought first off, the soundtrack itself is pretty fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's the very musical period. number, very period. And then uh, the musical numbers are are pretty darn good i i don't yeah i didn't think i I didn't think there was but they're good i didn't think there were gonna go that route with some like musical numbers i thought they'd play it straight and just because you'd be following a bunch of other pinocchios particularly the original Mm. 1941 that disney did and those are that's kind of a tough act to follow if you really want to write your own songs Right, you're like, <laughs> but everything felt appropriate and very period. I love the ongoing thing with uh, Pinocchio performing for Volpe. How the songs become more and more propagandist as time goes yeah, on. Yeah, right. Uh, me too. I like that too. That he realizes that they he has to Volpe realizes he has to kind of like that's his audience, and so that's what it becomes, you know. And you're mm-hmm. like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought I thought that was great too because Volpe sings the song about being king, and then it's just like totally he just bows down to to Mussolini immediately, like yeah. as he comes around, and you're like, okay, all right. I mean, it's, it's also no coincidence that Volpe has a giant nose as a disabled yes, person, right? right? Oh my god, dude! And and because we're sp- speaking spoilers, his death was fucking. That was the one where I was like, that. This ain't a kids movie. I don't. I don't know. I just saw a man die. <laughs> like I was just like. I was just like. I just saw a monkey splash in the ocean and a man die. I don't know what the fuck. Like and Pinocchio almost burned on a cross. I'm like, the fuck. <laughs> I was like. I was like. I was like. Damn. After a whole like, uh, it, the, the whole fancy island thing. I was just like, oh, okay, not a. Not exactly your normal kids movie here. Like, like has a little bit more to say and a little bit more chutzpah. It is, You're like, it is interesting, like, the subtle way that this movie portrays, like, Christian slash Catholic faith. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's non-judgmental and it feels appropriate for the period. It definitely comes from a filmmaker who grew up Catholic and is now agnostic. Yeah. Especially with his like, why does everyone like him but not me? So uh, mm-hmm. like scene with Pinocchio, I was like, I was like, mm, okay, <laughs> it's like, and, and and also and, like the genuine questions of like uh, that a kid would have. Yeah, right. It, it's and and kind of this like kind of air of like we like why aren't we judging? these higher powers you know like like he said like geppetto even says to him no you now have to go to war you know like and you're like he's not a real boy geppetto (laughs) you don't have to do shit like you know like you don't have to do any of that but okay like it's just kind of these uh it's this very subtle way of twice questioning these very high powers you know in the Mm -hmm. movie of being like yo there's mussolini uh, you know, and then and, and then there's and the big guy upstairs, and, 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 or the big girl, whoever you care about, whatever you believe, who cares? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I thought that was an interesting, like, uh, uh, like connection he's trying to make because I do believe that, and I and I'm 
I, I, I probably we. I mean, we are, our most viewed episode is Ben Hur episode, and we did hilarious shit on that. But I, uh, but I'm not being hilarious here. Is that I do believe that a lot of religion can lead to easy fascism because it's a mm-hmm. very much it's it's the same wording, you know, like it's all the same, like bow down, give in, you know, like uh, you know, like uh, serve, give, you know, like it's all these. It's uh, it's the same. It, that's the problem, though. Fascism is perverting something. Like uh, that's yeah. what it is. That's what it's meant. You know, it's not that the those words are bad for the faith. It's more like fascists are able to twist those words and what's happening uh, with people following. Uh, you know, like easily. You know, like because it's very easy at that point. You know, like if you're already just listening to whatever the priest is telling you every Sunday then it's very easy to just listen to whatever Mussolini says every Sunday. You know, like, you're just kind of like, okay, it's very, very small jump. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I I feel bad for saying it, but at the same time, it's the way it is. <laughs> uh, moving on, though. <laughs> uh, uh, Sean, are you frozen? I may have lost you, buddy. Oh no! I'm gonna just keep talking until we get to Sean back. Um, the I I I was talking about not your standard film, dark themes. Um, where is Deshaun? Um, I was saying it was a three printed Pinocchio figure, and I I do want to say I absolutely want the Pinocchio figure itself. Uh, I think that that is a that would be a dope. Um like uh, actual figure figure like you know like uh, like a gunpla like that could put together oh no we fully lost to sean hopefully we're getting him back right now there he is oh Oh, my goodness we got him back it's okay i badly stalled until you got back it's okay (laughs) (laughs) um but i was just i finished my religion fascism talk uh and moved on to that i want a pinocchio figure uh <laughs> that uh i thought that uh you know put it that, that pin- would be nice i know Leica like sells like actual high quality versions of like their characters like i've seen akubo where it's like they handcrafted yeah. it so it's almost as authentic as like the puppets they actually use to film I'm right like, i kind of want it <laughs> i kind of want it <laughs> it's like if i can't get the puppet give me that you know like it's basically it Uh, or just release the files for the 3d printer i'll find somebody who will 3d print me one because uh (laughs) i'll take that too (laughs) i would for some reason i would love like a tiny little like like D &D mini figure (laughs) of pinocchio like about the size of like the one i actually have like this guy nice there you go that'd be cool yeah right it's that's the thing the design is like kind of like kind of really cool because he's got like all the nails sticking out of him even in his back and like the way his arms are attached it's it's interesting it's very toy like which is mm-hmm. why i say like i kind of want to figure you know like i want to i want to e- uh, either want a a plomo of him you know a figure i can build or you know an actual like a neca type of thing cuz that would be yeah. sick that that'd be awesome um but also you know everyone everyone could be chill and just release the files for the 3d printer and that would be sick (laughs) you're like (laughs) yeah that that, that, that'd be cool um but uh the what it, I've been talking for too long to Sean, so something <laughs> it's, it's something for you because I've been I tried to stall there but I got it we got it back uh, how do you feel about the way compared to like the original story or other versions of the story you felt like they made stand-ins or combined characters? Like if you look at Volpe, he's kind of a composite of several different characters that you're yeah. usually used to. Like he's the ringmaster, like he's the he's the fox. Yes, right. Well. He's kind of the all the villains combined, which mm-hmm. I think is is kind of smart. I do think it kind of removes from Pinocchio, the constant like running into bad people because he's in bad situations type of yeah. thing going on, but it's it, that's it, it's still it, it didn't lo- completely lose that. It just uh, that's why I think they have so many different villains in the original Pinocchio story. Is it's, it's kind of like okay, um, I do think and- it's kind of. 
it's kind of funny. The Jiminy Cricket, they tra- no, they don't call him Jiminy Cricket. They call him Sebastian Cricket, and then which is the more the original name, you know, like in the original it, story's it isn't, name. Actually, that was what no? I was curious about and looked up. In the original story, he doesn't really have a name. He's just referred to as like the cricket, cricket or the talking cricket. So Jiminy specifically is a Disney trademark. Oh, and, and uh, Del Toro's. And they're like, well, we we don't just want to call him the cricket or the talking cricket. That's lame. Let's actually give him a name. So Sebastian J. Cricket. Sebastian J. Cricket. Um, And I I love that he still plays like violin and stuff like that. I think that that was Mm -hmm. great. Um, But what I thought was a great substitution is that in the Disney film, they just make it that Jiminy Cricket's fucking alive. You know, he's totally fine. In the original story, Pinocchio gets pissed at Jiminy Cricket and kills him with a hammer just straight up wham and kills you like cricket and mm-hmm. uh even though he's his friend and and then the rest of the time he's cricket is a ghost bothering uh <laughs> pinocchio and i kind of like that they allude to that here with that the, there's multiple times that that uh that cricket gets like smashed but like isn't dead and then uh but and then at the end we realize that he is actually dead telling the story from beyond the grave so it like is very much like the original story and you're kind of like okay there you go like you know like i like that you know in a way they're able to like slip in how the original story told it you know like Mm -hmm. and and i like that um uh but i i do i did laugh like giggle at every time he was like life is pain i don't know that's the part that i was just <laughs> giggling about i was just like jeez <laughs> like i just and then of course at the end with him being like life is wonderful i was like okay it's pretty good though <laughs> i was like yeah. i was like i was like it's a little cheesy but uh i'm gonna let it slide because it's so good <laughs> I'm just like, uh, we'll let that be. But it's then, like um, it's going to make you uncry the tears you've cried. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, I do love the new fish design. I thought the instead of it just being like a whale, it's like this gigantic, like prehistoric fish thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really love the look of that. That's um, a, that's a very Del Toro thing. Same thing with like the wood sprite slash right? blue fairy and death. It's just like, well, it can't just be a normal fairy. <laughs> it's got to like, well, have or no like the traditional like homogenized version of what we think of the fae. Because if you actually look at the actual fae from old fairy tales, they're <laughs> much more intimidating and sort of almost alien like. Yeah, right. So I'm glad they went that route. But it's just like, well, it can't just be a fucking whale. (laughs) And it's really uh, an incredible uh, piece of stop animation, the fish. I feel like Mm -hmm. it's... uh, I feel like, first off, the water effects in this movie are fantastic. And then just the the way the fish moves around reminds me of, like, Howl's moving castle at points. You know, like, you're just like, what the fuck? There's so many moving parts in that fucking fish. You know, (laughs) you're just like, Jesus Christ. Um, But I think the most important substitution, and I think what you're alluding to, is the Fantasy Island substitution of them being like, instead of Fantasy Island, Pinocchio shipped off to a boy war camp, basically. It's like boot camp for children. It's it's Mm -hmm. to make child soldiers, uh, which was a very real reality for German kids and and Italian youths, is that there was, you know, uh, Hitler's youth and there was, you know, basically Mussolini's youth, and they were trained for war. And I think that it, those scenes are fantastic because it's, they're playing at this, they basically like play at this fantasy of war there, you know, like, and mm-hmm. in, it, it, you know, instead of fancy Island where they get to like smoke cigars and do all they want, they get to, uh, play at this very adult thing that they keep being told they need to be good at, you know, like, yeah. they keep, you know, like, and you're just like, Rrr. <laughs> and, uh, then them trying to win together is like so cute because it's like, it, it, it you know, like kids don't, want conflict right from the get-go you know like it takes yeah. and it's also human sort of that learned like... experience to not want to like to want to beat something like that you know like you're just like yeah Ugh. And it's also sort of that it also has that old adage of like you don't have to be afraid of like monsters that don't exist that's not what's gonna get you it's people you need to worry about exactly and it's shown right away because uh you know nothing's actually 
uh, in danger of them. And immediately, uh, Ron Perlman's character uh, it tells him to shoot Pinocchio. Tells Candlewick to shoot Pinocchio. And you're kind of like, you're, go- you're just like, damn, that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like, that, is, that, is, uh, that is some fucked up shit. But it, show- it shows what you're saying is that he... Th- his father's the real monster. It's like he's the real person who's hurt Candlewick and like is forcing all these kids to do this stuff. And like it, it's just, and and like is very unfeeling and took her uh, his son away from uh, his wife. You know, like it's just like you know, like taking a mom away from his son. You know, like it, one of these like it's it's one of those like silent scenes. They don't say anything, but it's kind of this like painful scene where you're like, why did she's sending off like a twelve year old? to war basically for what you know like yeah you're like for what you know like it's it's exactly exactly mm-hmm. you're just like that's fucked like that's so wild uh, and it's for something in their little village that's what you know they, they emphasize also is it's just kind of this little italian village and still somehow it it becomes a target several times and you know just because they can't stop you know, like you're just like, oh man, I love a good anti-war message. I love it, mm-hmm. love it. I'm like, oh man, Del Toro, fucking hit me with it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, tell me that war is bad, Del Toro. Sounds great. Tell me again. Um, that's why I love Gundam all the time. I'm always like, oh yeah, El- uh, Tommy Elf, tell me that war is bad again by showing me war crimes. Hell yeah. <laughs> you're just saying, like, you're like, yeah, that's fucking great. Um. I, I love the substitution of that the boys don't turn into donkeys. They're put on they put on gas masks so it makes their face look long. And then they're sent yeah. into uncertain fate as the fort basically blows up. Like uh it, it's it's this like it, it's this kind of horrifying moment where you're just like Pinocchio usually leaves them to their fate and it's like and it that's exactly what happens here and you're kinda like Jesus Christ. <laughs> you're just mm-hmm. like, you're like, damn. <laughs> like, um, but I, I thought that was the best substitution of the movie. I thought that was like so poignant and, and well done and fits so well to the story. It didn't feel like a stretch, you know, like it didn't, it's, it just felt right. You know, like I, I thought that was uh, really fantastic. All right. One of my favorite things pertains to basically the ending. Yeah. Okay. Which and I also... cried for, by the way. Of course you I, did. I was watching it at 10 in the morning. 10.30 in the fucking morning. I'm bawling like a fucking baby. I was okay for so long, Deshaun. And then, <laughs> the, uh, and then he was dead and they were holding him up and I was just losing it i uh, like i i've cried you know i've said i've cried at a lot of movies you know in this podcast but this is one of the heaviest i've just like bawled at the content going on you know i was just Mm -hmm. like jesus christ it just it just uh, rips out your heart there for a second (laughs) just like fuck they did such a good job there but what i love is the like Pinocchio becoming a metaphorical real boy through love, but they don't mm. actually change his appearance. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which I love because Del Toro has a similar sort of sensibility to that sort of thing that I do, and that don't change. You don't need to be to change to be accepted. Yes, for who you are. And which he brings, is he, that little bit of Frankenstein that I said is mm-hmm. in this story is that like he, he's they're like he's a monster and you're like eh. <laughs> you <Yeah. made> him. <laughs> like him <laughs> but Del Toro also brings this up a lot in every no matter how good it is every version of Beauty and the Beast always ends with the Beast then becomes human and <laughs> it sucks because that's not who you've grown attached to yeah that's not who true. you had to be convinced to actually love as well as the love interest has so. No matter what you can imagine in your head, the actual human form is always going to be disappointing. That's also the case for the Disney one. It's very much the case in the Disney one. First off, because he's ugly. I've I've heard that many a times from women who I've watched Beauty and the Beast with. They're like, he's so damn ugly when he's human. It's like he's sort of rough, handsome as the Beast, and then he comes he out looks, human. If you and look at like, his design, he looks very much like a proto Tarzan. Yeah, right? A little bit. Yeah, like, watch bit. Beauty and the Beast again and look at that reveal. Just, like, he looks so much like what they would eventually design Tarzan to look like. Except Tarzan was hot. Everyone, can, you know, everyone knows that. <laughs> like, well, Tarzan, is... also, well, Tarzan was meant to be rough, and he also has, like, a nice tan and everything. <laughs> exactly. They were able to improve on it. It's and the give beta. Him a six-pack. It was the rough draft. <laughs> 
But the point is, like, you fall, it's like you convince not only the characters in the film to fall in love with the beast, but also the audience themselves to fall in love with the beast and right? accept them. Why would you then immediately undermine them by turning inhuman? That doesn't work. That's basically what the entire conceit of uh, The Shape of Water was. That's true, it's just like, actually. It's just like, no, love the creature. I love my monsters. <laughs> I do find a lot of similarities with this movie in Shape of Water, of course. I feel like there's, of course, I think that that's a lot of similarities here. Um, but and I they think hammer that, that in with the like, I'm not Carlo. Stop trying to make him <laughs> expect yeah, right? me to be Carlo. Like, I'm your son, but I'm someone different. I did love that, though. I thought that was, I thought that was great because it's, it, it's such a, I don't know, it's such a real sibling feeling. I feel mm -hmm. like that they're especially kind if of you like lose a child. Yeah, especially if you lose a child, but it's also it's just like a kind of normal sibling thing where your parents why will can't be like, you be why aren't you like, like yeah, the golden why can't child? You? Exactly, exactly. So they're like kind of even if you haven't had that full trauma of like losing somebody, I think people can still connect with that where it's just like yeah, the you know their their father trying to be like you know like be like this other person you know. And you're just kind of like, uh, like, you know, like that's, I feel like that's what's uh, so important there. It's able to connect on so many levels mm -hmm. with that story, with that little bit. And I was like, that's pretty great. But <laughs> I love, but I love that they accept that. So it's like, no, you don't have to change. You can just be you and you can still be considered a real boy. And I love the fact that they effectively make Pinocchio immortal by the end. Yeah, right. It's like a really sad, melancholy note to end on that he like watches the people he grew up with die, but then gets to like live on. But it's also just like, yeah, but life in and of itself is beautiful, and maybe he'll come to rest at some point. Right? I everything ends eventually. I thought that was great. I thought that was awesome. It also adds to like the monsterness of this, you know, mm -hmm. like it adds to this like, and it lives on, you know, sort of thing. And you're kind of like, I. I love that. It feels very fairy tale that he just does. So what you just keep. Die. So what you keep just reiterating is that we just need Guillermo del Toro to direct a fucking Frankenstein adaptation. I mean, yes, yes, he's wanted yes. to. He's wanted. <laughs> yes, to. I would a absolutely. I would buy tickets for that. No fucking Especially question. Especially since like he said that if he were to he to do it, he would definitely like lean really heavily on like the bernie rights and illustrations of frankenstein i'm uh, like come on <laughs> you're like do it do it I i'm want so it. starved of like wanting like a fateful if not directly text to text but in spirit to the original yeah. frankenstein novel as opposed to the cultural zeitgeist universal frankenstein and exactly. the closest i can get is the kenneth Branagh film which is very flawed but it's the best <laughs> i can get for now it's that yeah that is not that's not the movie that's not it but it is it's trying robert de niro surprisingly fucking good in that movie i don't know you think Makeup's robert de niro weird. as the, the frankenstein monster you're like huh <laughs> no i mean i saw him run in uh the irishman he could do he could do frankenstein i get it <laughs> well he was actually not <laughs> decrepit just yet when he did that <laughs> hey that's something to say that man's still working like that man's I know, still but working. That scene where he, but that wide shot in the Irishman where he's beating up that dude looks like he's about to break his hip. <laughs> I know. He's like, J -j 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 -j. And you're like, oh no! It's that's, the same thing with like Sam Jackson. Man. It's the same thing with Sam Jackson and Captain Marvel where they have him fucking running down the hall. He's just like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> just like I'm sure Pulp Fiction era Sam Jackson would be able to sprint. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, hey guys, how about don't make him sprint? <laughs> you know, like let's change. Don't the make script. him run. Yeah, like let's make the script so he doesn't have to run. Let's or at least have out. a double or something. Yeah, I don't know. Oh my goodness, man, it's so funny. Um, but <laughs> I I think that the ending is 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 absolutely spectacular, and it really is what uh, I was sitting there the whole movie going. I'm thinking this is an eight. I'm thinking it matters about the last half an hour, but I'm like thinking this is an eight, you know, like I, I, and then, and then that last half an hour hit and I was like, 
it's a nine. This is a this is a nine in my book. This is good. This is fantastic. Like this is uh the only reason why it's not a ten is I feel like it sort of wastes time at a certain point. But like we said, it's like sort of it's got a purpose on that. You know, like it's mm-hmm. trying it's trying to be like, hey, it's Pinocchio, and then it's like, <laughs> here you go, he's dead, motherfucker. Hit him with you a gotta get him comfortable before you sucker punch him. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's like, I wouldn't call it a twist, but I do think it's like, it's enough of a change where you're like, it's okay. The turn. Not yeah, a twist, it's a but turn. it's a turn. It's a turn. And you're like, that, I felt like that was significant because I was like, okay, this is, this is different. I was like, all right, it's not just going to be another Pinocchio. And I think that's what most people are going in. They're going, they're going, I skip the tom hanks one why would i go for this one and you're like well the answer is this is spectacular and yeah. and, a, and a, an absolute work of art uh it, 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 that's really plus it. did you seriously think the fucking live action remake disney one was going to be good come on dude the problem is is that uh i was so pissed off by the way uh jet i, I flew jet blue to baltimore for work the other t- week and they were putting up trivia on there and they go what's the number one grossing animated film of all time and they're like Toy Story, Lion King 2019, or uh, or, or or Aladdin. And I'm like, well, I know it's not Toy Story, and I know it's not Aladdin. It can't be Lion King. And then they were like Lion King 2019, and I was like, fuck! <laughs> like, it's just, <laughs> just like <laughs> you're just like that's I knew that. I, it's like I knew that was true, but damn it! But that's, that's why really, they keep yeah, making them because that's you keep why. fucking seeing them. That's why 22 million don't lie. Like, you know, like, they, they, like it's, they made a lot of 200 million. Sorry, I it said 22 million, but it's 200 million. I, that I grew up with, and I can take my kids to this one. Right? Exactly. That's, that's it. That's it. And I, and I, I think that that's why, uh, I think they knew Pinocchio was just not going to be the hit and neither was, uh, uh, lady in the tramp was not going to be bringing people into the, the, that's why they released both of those. It's like uh, Disney, Disney plus. Disney plus. Yeah. But I, I feel like there, there'll be a couple more and we'll, they will be the ones that will try to get them in seats. You know, like you're just like, uh, they definitely had hunchback in the works before Notre Dame actually burned down. So they're just like, well, now we can't do that. I suppose that's one advantage. <laughs> Such a beautiful landmark burning down is that Disney doesn't get their fucking hands Don't on it. Don't fucking say that. <laughs> that's why it I said. It was like I one suppose. of the major tragedies of our lifetimes was neither. No, like it's like watching the like the 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 Library of Alexander burn, you, Alexandria <laughs> burn. You know, like thing, this Frank. is very much that. They're, <laughs> like here's the thing: they're gonna rebuild it, and guess what? It's been rebuilt before. We'll yes, be fine. True. True. Uh, true it's just what uh, it's just one of those things that i'm like these will be one of those things that I, they'll be like agree, wow look like, at that landmark and now i've it's always wanted up. to go to france and see notre dame so i'm like well, right. i guess i have to wait a little longer now because I, I, I gotta wait a while <laughs> that's fucked up i i yeah it's one of those things where i'm like the minute they try to do Emperor's New Groove is when I'm really just being like, fuck you guys. Fuck no. I ain't, nobody want this. <laughs> nobody want this shit. Like, stop this. Right. Yeah. It's, it's... Like, I think I'm I think I'm safe for now on Treasure Planet because no one gives a fuck about Treasure Planet. That's not me. So, no, I no, no, I'm no. Okay. I want Treasure Planet. No, no, I'm no, I'm against. No, listen to me. I'm against that. I would love a live action Treasure Planet. Well, That'd that's be the thing. dope as fuck. It <laughs> could work, but will it? <laughs> No, probably not. Probably not. That's but it thing. would be dope as fuck if they if dumped done money well. Into Treasure it. Planet would be fucking awesome. But will it be done well? <laughs> Evidence suggests probably not. Maybe, maybe. It's when they're reaching into like Black Cauldron and Treasure Planet that you're like, guys, stop with this live action stuff. You're uh, like, just... Black Cauldron, they might as well since they can just pull from the books and make it a more faithful adaptation. Yeah, but it won't get seats. Pretty beloved. It, it, it's not like the worst like released Disney animated film of all time will do well a second time. If you make it live action, there's just no fucking way. But I mean, at the same time, I mean, at I, that point, then just don't call it the black cauldron. Just call it the Chronicles of Bourdain and just treat it as its own uh, thing. That's true. I, I would say though, with these live action ones, it's, it's almost more offensive to do the ones that are such big classics. It's like, I almost would take these, like a treasure planet or a black cauldron, even though they wouldn't get butts and seats because they didn't 
get the treatment they should have the first time, you know? Yeah. Like, and maybe and just the idea of like, time? we are remaking this because there is something new that we can do with this. But that's that's not the ideal. No. <laughs> just no. like, we just it, want it's... the money we had before. It's the same thing as like when they tried to do Race to Witch Mountain. They were like, we think there's something more here. And you're like, cool. And they were like, nah, never mind. It's not. We don't got nothing. And you're like, <laughs> you're like oh, okay. <laughs> and it's like Dwayne The Rock Johnson just keeps signing up for these ride movies. And you're like, somebody stop him. Like somebody stop him before he does. Like I could say somebody stop him mountain. for most of his filmography, to be honest. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's true. He's not, a <laughs> it's not, he's not an untalented person. No, absolutely. But kind of like is, Ryan Reynolds, he is still the most the entertaining age. man in entertainment. What do they say? The most electric man in entertainment. That's what they used to mm -hmm. say when he wrestled. It's like he's still which is got ironic that. considering Black yeah. Adam's power set. <laughs> Right? I, that's why I bet he was into it. He was like, oh, yes. <laughs> like, it all makes sense. It all comes around. <laughs> okay, we've gone on a tangent. Pinocchio, though, this is a spectacular movie. I think that it, it's worth watching. It's worth watching with your family. Uh, it's worth watching as what, as in my mind, the best picture, best animated picture of last year. I think it will, it should win the oscar for it i think that the just love that went into this uh shows and shines mm -hmm. and i think that that's what makes this special is that it uh del toro says it took 15 years to put this movie together and i think that it shows uh yeah uh, yeah animation already has a much longer like production period than live action film so like you add the just the sheer craft and tediousness of stop motion animation to it and you have yourself something <laughs> which is a real problem when you make kids your leads a lot of the time because mm. they tend to like age out and their voice changes that's what happened with Coraline yeah right you're just like holy shit <laughs> that took that movie took a long time too that took uh something mm -hmm. like 10 years to make and you're just like jesus christ i i kind of like that this isn't a henry selick movie though i think a lot of people are going in thinking this is gonna be a henry, a henry selick style movie yeah. and it's not uh, this is and I I like that. I think that it it feels different. It flows different. Uh, I think that that's what works uh, in a world where we own like people's cultural touchstones for stop motion are just Henry Selleck films. Mm -hmm. I like that Pinocchio can stand and be. Did you watch Wendell thing. and Wild? I haven't yet. Uh, it's on. It I put it as my next thing on the watch list. It's worth it. Yeah. Is that one? Is that one up for an Oscar? I don't think that one's up for an Oscar. I don't think. I don't think it did. is now. No, I was like, I was kind of like, oh, but uh, what is it? The Water Beast is what is that movie that I didn't fucking see? I was like, uh, I was like, OK, but no, guys, that um, the point is, and, we just it, it's nice to have more voices for a yeah. very, very niche medium. Yeah, especially uh, because he talks about in the documentary. I keep talking about the documentary, but it's so it's like so funny. watch it. <laughs> uh, watch yeah, it. absolutely. Go watch it. Uh, is that it? Uh, that he talks about trying to bring in Mexican creators and animators mm -hmm. and, and most of his crew was Mexican. And I love that because it's, it's one of those things that Hollywood dominates and uh, to make something truly different, you have to kind of make it out of Hollywood. Uh, and I think that that's what I think that you can see the love here. So I, yeah. I, I think I, I, that's why I, I see why you were, were you ranking this third in your favorite movies of last year? I think we said last yeah, episode. This was like, this was number two, and yeah. then we saw the whale, and that became number two. Yeah. It's hard for me, because I think it goes everything all at once, the whale, maybe this now. I have you know, mm -hmm. I haven't seen Glass Onion yet but, or anything like that, but I, I'm like, oh, this might be – that might be third now for me, because I do I, – I thought this was fantastic and, and well done. And it uh, – you know when you watch a movie and you're like, yeah, this will live beyond this year. You know, like we do reviews all yeah. the time and you just in a feel lot the of like, movies, there is there's longevity here. This will age. Yes. Yes, exactly. We we review a lot of movies. We've been reviewing movies for almost 10 fucking years now. Me and Deshaun have been doing a podcast on and off for almost 10 years now and reviewing stuff on our own ways and, you know, on GalaxyGeek.com where you can yeah. read and watch Before and Galaxy everything Geek, like that. I wrote for like a review site for a while. It's like we've like been we're doing always stuff talking for a about, while. We're always talking about shit. We're always talking about shit and 
I think a lot of stuff kind of disappears. You know, when you cover mm. current stuff, a lot of stuff falls to the back. And when you watch something special, like Everything Everywhere All at Once, and you go, oh, this might stand out not as just from this year, but this decade, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like the Pinocchio is sort of that way, where you're like, you're like, oh, shit, this might be one of the better animated movies of this decade, let alone mm. this year, you know? Like, I, I think that that's what I... I I know I'm kind of like tooting the horn, uh, but like I think that it really is something special. Um, yeah, but. and it's clearly gotten a lot of people in who aren't familiar with Del Toro's other stuff to now yeah. want to like watch his other stuff, which you know, do that. I unfortunately <laughs> only own two of his movies physically. Uh, I own a few. I um I will say I did feel some of Del Toro's um, Troll Hunters in this uh, because mm. I watched a lot of Troll Hunters because of Del Toro. He was and it was a fun show. Uh, I kind of left a little bit after when um, Anton Yelchin died. Yeah, when he died, uh, it's like they used the rest of his voice lines, and I was kind of like, "All right, I'm out." You know, like <laughs> at that point, I was like, "I was like, I was like, it's sad." to like recast him mm -hmm. and everything you know like it's not like rick and morty where you're like oh he's an asshole let's fucking recast him with some with a million other people who can do a rick and morty accent you know like you're like hey guess what there's a thousand tiktokers who do that voice perfectly <laughs> i'm sure you can find them it's like antoine was kind of, it's like sad when you lose somebody you know like mm -hmm. when it's actually like you know and that's what made me stop watching troll hunters but i felt like the fun action of troll hunters is in Pinocchio, you know, like in, in a lot of, I felt it, especially with the giant. Uh, I mean, of course, a lot of troll hunters action was fighting giant trolls. Mm -hmm. This is like the giant fish sequences fe felt very much like troll hunters in that way. And then there's, uh, you know, all the period pieces feels like pan labyrinth. The very beginning feels very pan labyrinth. Uh, That's what I you got also, the criterion for pan's labyrinth. You were talking, we were talking about shape of waters references here. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of del Toro here. There's a lot, it, Ron Perlman's here. So there's Hellboy, you know, like, you know, like, like, you know, and Blade Two, and, and Blade Two. Fuck, I forgot he did Blade Two. Fuck yeah, yeah he dude. did Blade Two. I keep being like Mary, we gotta watch Blade, and she's like, she's she's like, I don't think I like Blade. I'm like, no, no, no. This is like cheese. You'll love it. It is so like, fun. It is such a product of its time, but it like makes you miss that time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like. All I have to say is Vampire Raves, and you should be like, all right, Vampire like, Raves. <laughs> And for Blade 2, the fucking, just the concept of the Reapers with the old yeah. green mandibles is the coolest fucking take on the vampire. Right? Sick. Fucking sick. But uh, basically, guys, uh, we're saying we're, we've always been Del Toro fans, and you can see yep. it in I this. still need to watch um, Start a Cabinet of Curiosities. Oh, yeah, me too. Because he's he's in it with Netflix right now. So Yeah, he's he's funny. It, it's like he's doing uh, his best... Uh, 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 Hitchcock, you know, where he's like mm -hmm. kind of introducing the stories with weird little tidbits, and uh, I like it a lot just because of that, you know. Like I, I've watched a lot of Hitchcock, Hitchcock's Hour, you know, like so I, but, you know, like. I but like he's also been talking too. about like, hey, Pinocchio seemed to do well for me. Maybe I'll do other stop motion stuff. Oh, do like it. he's even toyed with like maybe I could since. No one else will fucking let me make my Frankenstein or my H.P. <laughs> Lovecraft adaptation. Maybe I'll just do a stop motion for Netflix, and I'm like. A Lovecraft adaptation in stop motion <laughs> with like your tendencies for creature design sounds like everything yes. I could ever want. Yes, please. <laughs> I would take this. I would have this, please. This sounds good. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I this, that's basically it. Is I kind of came out of Pinocchio being like that was great, and I hope everyone can see that and see how great Del Toro is, and they just give him more fucking money. That's all I want, is just give Del Toro more money so he can just keep making whatever the fuck he wants. Literally, he's one of those directors that you're just like, why doesn't he have infinite money to make whatever the fuck he wants? Why Why are there people still gatekeeping him? You know, like, mm -hmm. and that's that's really why I think he needs the Oscar for best uh, best animated picture there because you're like then it'll be like a big throw in the fucking faces of people being like oh, I don't know if we can give him uh, Mountains of Madness you're like shut up give him Mountains of Madness you yeah. know like, <laughs> like I'm glad Shape of Water helped a lot yes yeah exactly it definitely helped with the like naysayers of gave him some clout 
Yeah, and I I hope this can do the same thing. Just add even more clout, and you can keep mm-hmm. making stuff like Crimson Peak, which was dope. Like, <laughs> fucking loved Crimson Peak. That shit was weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would say, I fucking love shit like that. Um, uh, and that's the thing is, is I just want Del Toro to keep making weird shit, and I think that that's what's great about this is that this is a Pinocchio that's that's weird and in a very very good way. Um. But guys, I think that's all we have to say about Pinocchio. Anything else, Deshaun? You want to end? No. I mean, my last point was specifically about the ending. So yes, and I, I, I will say, yeah, again, I, we said it the whole podcast. You'll want to finish this movie and then watch the documentary. You, you just, yes. it's literally just scroll down on the Netflix app. It's there. I also hope this gets a physical release down the road. Oh yeah, and and yeah, I hope the documentary comes with it. You know, type of mm-hmm. thing. Um, I would absolutely buy a steel box of this, no question. Um, I, I, this is one of those ones that you should probably tell your friends about. You know, one of those things where you're like, yeah, no, have you seen Pinocchio yet? You know, like, like <laughs> which will be weird, but you're like, yeah, have you seen Pinocchio yet? Because it's worth it. Uh, it's mm-hmm. worth saying something about. Um, so guys, thank you so much for listening to the Warp Shelf podcast. Uh, thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for, you know, making the algorithm do its thing. Hit the buttons all down below, all that stuff. Um, we are on YouTube where you can see our beautiful faces. But if you can, uh, if you don't want to see our beautiful faces or, you know, can't because you're driving or something like that, uh, uh, you can always listen to us on any podcast platform. And I mean it pretty much any podcast platform. Just look up the warp shelf uh, and we will be there. Uh, pretty, I'm literally on it. We made sure about it. We're on pretty much everything. <laughs> and uh, and we've gotten a big pickup of audio listeners. So to all you audio people, hello. I love you so much. I love you so much. Thank you <laughs> for around. listening. Yeah, stick around. We're going to keep it up. Um, it, guys, we are going to keep it up. Uh, we we have a couple of movies we might want to talk about next mm-hmm. but of course uh, there's always the AFI list looming uh, over the horizon and so, and we will be covering more of that don't worry we will not walk away from these hundred movies we will be covering I mean that's fine the AFI was sort of an alternative to filthy casuals anyway to have <laughs> the like easy go to when we don't have an immediate right. discussion topic so and they all they do pretty well. I, it's yeah. like, I don't really care about the numbers, but for, you know, like if people can look at it and be like, that's a, like a film school film and they want to hear something about it. Absolutely. That's what the mission is, you know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. <laughs> to talk about those things and, you know, we can all get educated. And I mean, the other mission is to hang with my good buddy Deshaun here. Of course, that's always the fucking mission. <laughs> that's, it, that's it. It's like half this the was fucking just a product point. for us to <laughs> vent and geek about shit and just have discussions that everyone else around us is tired of hearing <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty much so guys uh support our bad habits by you know <laughs> by uh enable us the show. by <laughs> enable us by supporting the show and then following our own personal uh social medias i am yep frank on uh twitter and everywhere and uh, uh mod Karika nice nice and i do uh yep gundam which is my oh, other way uh is all those gundams behind me uh if you like gundam content uh i but it, i also post that stuff on twitter too so you know if don't worry if uh <laughs> if you thought you were gonna there. miss out on it i got the gundam everywhere but we also got a discord guys you can find that on the uh youtube page there's all the links there um and you know we like we love chatting so please uh, uh comment and talk to us like we would love to talk to you guys um so thank you uh as always and um go watch pinocchio is basically it like uh go watch it the documentary and we'll catch you next time <laughs> and we'll catch you next time adios